Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we'll talk about a physics phenomenon which is very rare but we have all experienced it in our lives before, the so-called St. Elmo's Fire. It's time to make some sparks and let's get started. Let's go! Hey, Julie, Debbie, left on hotel, left on four left, you're in sequence behind the competition ahead to Towers 23.9. Today's video is brought to you by the Captain Joe book, Read and Do. 100 checklists to become a better version of yourself. Are you looking for a great gift for a friend or yourself? Get to Joe's book and be inspired by 100 motivational checklists for personal growth, acts of kindness, positive lifestyle habits, and much more. Find the link in the description box below. Do you remember those plasma globes we used to have in the 80s and 90s? Something very similar looking can happen when flying an aircraft near or in between two thunderstorms causing visible lightning on the cockpit windshield and wing tips. But before we get into that, let's see where this all originated and where it got its name from. And no, this Elmo has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Throughout history, sailors witnessed some incredible scenes out at sea, especially when they came across terrifying thunderstorms, which may have caused the phenomenon of St. Elmo's fire. Now, these sailors would then write down in their journals, everything is in flames, the sky with lightning, the water with luminous particles, and even the very masts are pointed with a blue flame. It sounds terrifying, but that is how Charles Darwin seems to have experienced it. By today, we obviously know what caused these blue sparks and flames. Now, when there is a large charge separation between the ground and the atmosphere, as it would be during a thunderstorm, sharp objects have the ability to concentrate electric field gradients, causing the air to ionize around that object, such as the mast of a sailboat or the wingtips and the antennas of an airplane. Comparable to the small electric shock you get every now and then when you unintentionally charge yourself with your blanket, for example, and then touch the metal door handle with your fingers. Now that little spark coming off your finger, the sharp object, was a miniature plasma strike. Now Elmo's fire is similar, it just happens on a much larger scale. Does that make sense? Now while St. Elmo's fire is often considered a fascinating natural phenomenon, I have to admit I've only seen it a couple of times in 14 years of being a pilot, it does come with a few side effects on aviation for example, impacting flight performance. When an aircraft is flying through the clouds, it is common for the aircraft to become charged with static electricity due to the movement of the air particles, hence the blanket I mentioned beforehand. Now this can create an electric field around the aircraft, which then can lead to the formation of St. Elmo's fire. Now the formation can create a drag force on the aircraft which can reduce the aircraft's speed and increase its fuel consumption. I have to admit it is very marginal, but it's there. St. Elmo's fire can also have safety implications for the aircraft. Now, one of the most significant safety risks is the potential for electric arcing, which can occur when the electric discharge between the two conductive objects is strong enough to produce a spark. If electrical arcing then occurs on an aircraft, it can cause a variety of problems, including damage to aircraft's electrical systems and interference with critical flight instruments, especially with ATC antennas. Communication can be disrupted and a strong static background noises can be heard blocking out any reception. And electrical arcing can also pose a risk to passengers and crew members, particularly if the arcing occurs near fuel tanks or other hazardous materials. To mitigate these risks, aircraft manufacturers and airlines typically employ a variety of measures to reduce the likelihood of St. Elmo's fire occurring. Now, these measures may include the use of conductive coatings on the surface of the aircraft, and the more obvious ones are the installation of static wicks to discharge the static electricity at the wingtips and trailing edges. Now, to no surprise, the static discharges are replaced regularly as they burn up every now and then. And the use of lightning protection systems to redirect electrical currents away from the critical systems. 
Now, speaking of the passengers, St. Elmo's fire can also have an effect on their comfort. The presence of St. Elmo's fire can be unsettling for passengers, particularly those who are not familiar with the phenomenon. Now, the glow of St. Elmo's fire around the aircraft windows can be disorientating and distracting and can create a feeling of unease or an anxiety among the nervous flyers. No surprises there. Now, to address the issue, airlines may provide passengers with information about St. Elmo's fire before or during the flight. Now, this may include information about what causes the phenomenon and why it is not a safety concern and how it can be prevented. Airlines may also take steps to minimize the visibility of St. Elmo's fire from inside the cabin, such as increasing the brightness of the cabin lights to reduce the contrast or asking them to close the window shades. I'm pretty sure a lot of people won't do that because they actually want to see it because it's such a rare phenomenon. <laughs> so to sum up, St. Elmo's fire can be a fascinating natural phenomenon to observe. It is important though for those in aviation to remain aware of its potential risks and take steps to minimize its impact on flight operations. And finally, why is it actually called St. Elmo's Fire? Does it have anything to do with John Parr's hit single, St. Elmo's Fire? It's a great song, but it has absolutely nothing to do with it besides the title. Instead, it comes from the patron, St. Erasmus, who, according to the stories, continued preaching despite having a lightning bolt strike right beside him. Now, considering sailors are out at sea and experiencing drastic lightning storms, it makes sense that this saint is who they would pray to for good luck and a safe return home. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short little video about another great phenomenon of Mother Nature. And on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And perform a touch and go at my website check and get this fantastic book on Amazon, the link in the description box below. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.